Okie dokie. Hi everyone, I'm Anne Marie from Handmade Beauty Box and I am going to be showing you how to make homemade bath fizzies live today. If you're a Handmade Beauty Box subscriber, thank you very much. If you're just joining me for the first time on Periscope, hi Periscope, feel free to ask questions. Um, I have someone back there manning the cameras, Haley, who can ask questions live for me. And if you're a Handmade Beauty Box subscriber on our Ustream channel, thank you so much for being a subscriber. I really appreciate the support. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make these awesome bath fizzies. They are made out of baking soda and citric acid and some cocoa butter. Very simple, but also something that costs a lot of money in the store. So I'm excited to be able to show you how to make everything. So this month's Handmade Beauty Box included 24 ounces of baking soda, 12 ounces of citric acid. Notice that's a two to one ratio. Half an ounce of cocoa butter pastilles. I love the size of these cocoa butter pastilles because they're really, they're tiny little pastilles so they melt a lot easier than say the really large chunks of cocoa butter. So for ease of use, you can't beat them. Oatmeal, milk and honey, which is a delicious fragrance oil that smells, well, kind of like a little bit like a cookie or a delicious, amazing oatmeal, milk and honey bowl of yeah, delicious breakfast. Like just think about hot, steaming, delicious honey oatmeal. It smells so good. Coral mica. So this is a colorant that is totally cosmetic grade and works really well in bath fizzies. It's called coral mica. 0.2 ounces of rose petals, dried. A full one ounce of witch hazel in an aluminum spray bottle. One dropper. And you also received in your, this month's handmade beauty box, your f disc molds with lids. So these are the molds that we're gonna be making our bath fizzies in. So the lid pops off pretty easily so you can easily make the bath fizzy in here. You can use it as the mold or you can use it as the storage container. And you got 10 of those in this month's box. And finally, you received finished labels and easy to follow instructions in the box. If you're not a subscriber to Handmade Beauty Box, you can get the February box at handmadebeautybox.com on the singles page. And that way you can make your own bath fizzies at home. Speaking of at home, what you're gonna need from at home? You're gonna need two large mixing bowls, well, medium to large mixing bowls. I like to use glass when I'm making any sort of bath fizzies because I find that the citric acid does a little bit of kind of etching onto the glass. So I like to use the glass rather than using plastic because I notice with that citric acid doing a little bit of etching that sometimes the fragrance ends up getting into the plastic if you're not using glass. So make sure you're using some medium glass mixing bowls at home a small, small heat safe container. And again, the reason we're using a small heat safe container is because we're gonna end up melting those cocoa butter pastilles. Rubber gloves, those are totally optional, but I like to use rubber gloves on my hand if I just gotten a manicure or I wanna protect my nails because that citric acid and that baking soda have a lot of scrubby power and that scrubby power, well, it scrubs the nail polish right off your hands, right off your fingernails. So gloves, if, gloves are optional. If you're really sensitive to powder, like say when you're baking and you, like, you get the like, flour or the baking powder in the air and you're like, ugh, ugh and you cough, you can always wear a mask when you're doing this because you will notice a little bit of dust does float up when we're making this. And finally, a sifter. Thank you for all the hearts on Periscope. I am seeing all of your yellow and pink and red and salmon hearts. Makes me feel loved, thank you. Finally, you are going to need a sifter. Well, it's optional, but you're gonna want one. The reason that you want a sifter is so you can break up any of the clumps in the in your mixture because clumps end up causing little bumps or what kind of look like little warts on your bath fizzy. So those are the things you're going to need from home. While bath bomb ingredients can vary, the main ingredients are always two parts baking soda, 
to one part citric acid to get that fizzing reaction. And a part can refer to anything. So that could be two cups of baking soda to one cup of citric acid. It could be two ounces of baking soda to one ounce of citric acid. Just whatever you're doing, make sure it's a two to one ratio. You can also add lots of different additives like cornstarch or clays or different colorants or oils, but you do really have to be mindful of those extra ingredients so you don't accidentally set off the fizzing reaction too early or make a fizzy mixture that doesn't stay together. For example, I once got really excited about using dead sea salts in my bath fizzy mixture and I was like, oh, I'm just gonna load this thing up with dead sea salts and make a really, really luxurious bath. Well, I ended up putting so many salts in my, in my bath fizzy mixture that the entire thing didn't stay pressed together. So really keep that in mind when you're adding extra ingredients from home. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got Courtney behind the camera for our Handmade Beauty Box viewers and then Haley is looking at Periscope for anybody who's watching on Periscope. And Courtney, before I get started, is there any questions or anything that I missed that I should be going over right now? Let's get started. All right, let's get started. So first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to make my area completely ready to go. And for those of you watching on Periscope that might not be Hammy Beauty Box subscribers or that you might want some, you might want to buy this box later. If you stay tuned, I will have a coupon at the end for you. I'm going to be setting out all of my ingredients in a pretty logical fashion so I can find them later. I'm also going to kind of pre-open my oatmeal milk and honey to make sure it's ready to go. And I'm moving these adorable bath bomb molds that came, or bath bomb labels that came inside this month's Handmade Beauty Box off to the side so they don't get messy. So first things first, gonna lay out the molds. And so I actually have these laid out off to the right of me, but they are all laid out and ready to go. I've pulled off the lids so the lids are not on them. Again, once you get everything mixed in, you really want to have, you really wanna be able to work quickly. So I've got all of my lids off right now. And then I'm going to be using a sifter to mix my baking soda and my citric acid. And since my manicure isn't so hot, I'm gonna go ahead and skip the gloves for now. And the citric acid is a really interesting material because it is actually a, the material that you find on the outside of sour candies, interestingly enough. It's a really sharp tasting crystalline acid that is present in the fruits of uh, lemons and kind of more sour fruits. So it, interestingly enough, it's food grade. They use it a lot in, I think, wine making. But for us, we are using it to get a fantastic, to get a fantastic fizz. And the reason, you know, Courtney, this looks really perfect. I am not seeing any bumps in here at all. The reason that we do use the sifter is we just want to make sure there's no clumps or bumps. And honestly, this, I think it's been pre-sifted because there is literally no bumps that are coming at all. I might end up just dumping this out so that you guys out there on Ustream and Periscope aren't stuck watching me sift forever. That said, it is really important to make sure that there are no clumps. And remember I was talking earlier about if you want to use a mask or not use a mask? Right now, I really am getting a little bit of this dust. It is kind of going into my nose just a little bit. So if I was making this in a really in a really uh, large batch, for example, uh, you might consider using a mask because it, it doesn't, it does get airborne pretty easily. So now I'm gonna add my baking soda and sift it through. I'm also gonna be using, thank you for all your green hearts on Periscope. I'm also going to be using my fingers to help break up any clumps. Because again, clumps are not your friend because any sort of clumps in this, A, affect your two to one ratio, right? Because you'll have a big clump of something right in the middle there. But they also, the two to one, so the two to one ratio gets affected, but they also really do cause bumps on the outside of your bath fizzy. And bumps are no fun on the outside of your bath fizzy, just from an aesthetic reason. They're totally fine, there's no reason that you wouldn't be able to use it or sell it. But from an aesthetic reason, the bumps are really not fun to have. So I am just sifting, sifting, sifting to make sure that I don't have any clumps. I'm pushing this through. And one thing to keep in mind is if you were, 
If you're making these at home, you always want to start with containers that you've fully disinfected and sterilized or washed out. So make sure that you're starting with clean ingredients to start with and then also clean mixing containers. So we got this sifter, for example, from a baking supply store. So it is a sifter that you normally would use for food. Uh, would you add powdered milk during this time? If you use powdered milk or any sort of ingredient at this point, you would add it during this time. One thing I do wanna caution you is if you're thinking about adding extra ingredients to this, you never wanna add more than half a part. So we're so again, it's two parts baking soda, one part citric acid, max, max, max out at, max, max, max out at half a part of anything extra. Another thing to keep in mind with powdered milk, is that powdered milk can go sour when it's exposed to any sort of moisture. So if you've made your, your mixture and you've got your bath fizzy sitting out and you've got, fr you've got powdered milk in there, I would really recommend using that within a good three month period just because any sort of moisture that gets onto the, the bath fizzy with powdered milk on it will spoil that milk and you'll end up with a kind of uh, not such a great smell in the end. So I have, fully mixed my ingredients, or excuse me, I have fully sifted my ingredients, and now I'm going to be melting the cocoa butter pastilles in a small heat safe container, uh, and the reason, and in 15 second bursts. And the reason that we do 15 second bursts is because if the glass gets too hot, it can crack. And I've actually had this happen before. So if you're on Ustream right now, um, Courtney is gonna switch the camera and show you an actual Pyrex container that I managed to crack in the microwave because I let it get way too hot with too little material in it. So in this case, for example, you'll notice this is a really small container. Look how much smaller this is right here. Um, so you don't, you would never want to melt this small amount in say a container that was this big. That's just way too much head space. Um, and I know that it's a lot of people's fear that you'd be, if you're melting this in the microwave that you could potentially crack it. So you know what, as long as you are doing 15 second bursts and you're using a small container without a lot of head space, you should be fine. The, um, cups. You know, most of these cups are actually designed to be microwaved and put into high temperature. If you're really concerned though, you can always get lab beakers, which are made out of made out of very, very strong glass that's made to go extremely hot. I see Haley on Periscope is raising her hand. Yeah, if you add a clay to these bath bombs, um, would they break and get too dry? If you add a clay to the bath bombs, would they break and get too dry? No. If you add a clay to the bath bombs, they would not break and get too dry as long as you are staying within really good ranges. So for example, um, I would do one tablespoon per 16 ounces of mixture max for the clay. So right now, I am going to add my cocoa butter to my container and add 10 to 15 milliliters of fragrance oil to this powdered mixture and then mix. So. Here we go with that, and you notice it kind of wants to clump up. That's totally normal. We're gonna work that in, don't worry. Uh, maybe make sure when you're pouring this in that you're not pouring the hot oils directly under your hands. That could hurt. And cocoa butter, I love the ingredient because it is such a good ingredient for moisture. It's also a natural, it's also what's used in chocolate making of all things which is, makes it really fun to use because every so often you'll kind of get like a chocolatey warm whiff, which is fantastic. And cocoa butter pastilles are edible pastilles that are, again, they're fat from the cocoa beans. And so they're really, they have this really nice, mild, warm, chocolatey aroma. And they also, interestingly enough, if you're eating them, have tons of natural antioxidants. So the Cocoa butter and the fragrance oil are in, and the fragrance oil, we're doing 10 to 15 milliliters of fragrance oil to this powdered mixture. And if you're looking at that and thinking, hmm, that seems like a lot of fragrance for a small powdered mixture, you know what, you're right, it is a lot of fragrance. And the reason it's a lot of fragrance is because we are trying so hard to scent an entire bathtub. Think about how many gallons of water go into a bathtub. Of course you're going to be scenting 
pretty heavily. So this is scented, thanks for the green hearts on Periscope. So this is scented much more heavily than say if you were doing a lotion or something like that. So the intended use of your product really does affect how much scent you're going to be adding. So now we're gonna separate this into two bowls and it's okay to just eyeball it. And we're gonna be doing coral in one bowl and we're going to be doing white in the other bowl. And when you're adding fragrance, or excuse me, when you're adding colorant, it's what you see is what you get. So I'm just gonna be adding a little bit of the coral and hand mixing it in and seeing what I get. So one of the things also that you'll notice when you're making bath fizzies is sometimes the witch hazel really makes the color come out even more. And the witch hazel is what we're gonna be doing next. So witch hazel is commonly sold as an anti-inflammatory spray, and it's used in facial toners and natural mouthwashes and is very versatile. In this case, we're using it as a wetting agent to help our bath fizzy mixture stay together because right now when I am checking to see how well it's staying together, I'm seeing a little bit of clumpage happening. So I'm going to add a couple little bits of some rose petals directly to my mold here. And then I'm gonna be getting my bath fizzy mixture, the perfect consistency. And the reason I'm wanting just to prep my molds ahead of time right now is because once you get the bath fizzy mixture to a really good consistency, you're gonna want to work as fast as you can because you can start getting, this mixture starts kinda getting hard and clumpy. So we're gonna go with about five or 10 spritzes of witch hazel. And the reason we're not using water is because we don't want the fizzing reaction to start off too soon. Because if we use water instead of witch hazel, what ends up happening is the fizzing reaction starts right now in the bowl, and we definitely don't want that. I see Haley, can you use alcohol instead of witch hazel? Ask someone on Periscope. Um, yes and it doesn't work as well. Because what you'll find is that the alcohol evaporates out so quickly that it really doesn't keep your, it doesn't keep your uh, mixture very wet and moldable long enough. But you could use alcohol. There are also some people, I have seen a few people on the internet that have figured out how to do a oil and water combo that, may, that actually does work and doesn't start the fizzing reaction too early. So now we're going to just do, the, this is what we call just a little test just to see if they're sticking together, it is, and we're going to pack these into molds. So I'm gonna do white in this one, a little bit of pink, a little bit of white, and then push down. And I'm gonna move this off camera so I can show you guys how exactly hard I push down, because I push down pretty hard to get these firm enough to stay in. And then just take your excess, wipe it off on the side. And uh, this recipe is not on Soap Queen right now. It's uh, on Handmade Beauty Box, it's for a Handmade Beauty Box. However, SoapQueen.com does have quite a few free bath fizzy recipes for uh, the person that was just asking on Periscope. But it's two parts, there we go and we're out. And so this is just two parts sodium bicarbonate to one part citric acid with a little, with half an ounce of cocoa butter for the person that was asking about the recipe. Yes, Courtney, I see you have your hand raised. Once you unmold, how long will you have to let that bath bomb dry? Once I unmold, how long will I have to let that bath bomb dry? So this actually really is a great question. Thank you for asking. Um, you can use these right away I would not try moving them for a good 24 hours. This um, really does require a little bit of letting this bath fizzy kind of harden up in the air and get a little bit harder. If you're in a very humid area and you're like, oh, I can't leave these out for 24, 24 hours because all the fizzing reaction is going to start early, then what you could do is have a very, uh, very cool temperature stove to make a kind of drying chamber for yourself. And that drying chamber, you could put an entire thing of bath fizzies, like an entire tray of bath fizzies into an oven that was turned off, that was warmer, that had all the moisture sucked out of the air to keep your, to keep your bath fizzies drying and hardening at the same time. Yes, Courtney, I see you have your hand up. Can you use food coloring? 
Can you use food coloring? What another, this is another great question. So you don't want to use food coloring when you're making bath fizzies because food coloring is a water soluble product. And remember, bath fizzies start to fizz when they're introduced to water. And so if you put if you put food coloring into your bath fizzy to get a color, you're gonna end up starting the fizzing reaction early. So these guys you can just unmold on a really even flat surface and then leave them for about 24 hours before you start to use them. And before I, before I move on to the next phase, Courtney, did you want me to make any more bath fizzies or is there anything else I should answer for people? Oh, cute labels. Oh, cute labels, of course the cute labels. So, you know what, let me go ahead and package one so I can put the cute labels on them. So, as I mentioned, these molds that you got in your Handmade Beauty box for your February Handmade Beauty box came with adorable labels. And these are, these. I mean, obviously, when you're getting these, we want you to use them yourself, give them away, um, and so that's why we provide the labels. And so on handmadebeautybox.com right now, there are bonus, extra free, adorable labels, or what came in your box this month. These are the free extra ones from handmadebeautybox.com's blog. And what came in your box this month are these adorable labels. And I think they are so cute. So in order to use them, all you need to do is just pack your bath fizzy mold really tight Grab your lid, and remember your lid indents down. There's a little lip right here, so you don't fill your bath fizzy all the way to the top, and push it down. And then you can put your you can put your label on to either the top or the bottom. And I, since the roses are on the top, I like to put it on the bottom. And here we go. A Adorable, and the ingredients are on there for you. So these, again, are ready to gift or use right away yourself, or, or if you wanna start a small business, they just need some address, address information and weights on there, and you could even sell these. So, I have a couple more things I wanna show you. First of all, a really fun idea is mica painting. And so with mica, you, you're gonna have some extra leftover because when you're coloring your bath fizzies, what you see is what you get, right? So we got a really great color here and I didn't feel like I needed to use any more, but that left me with quite a bit of extra colorant. And so what you can do, I mean like literally, like this is the leftover colorant I had. It was so much colorant. So what you can do is take a little bit of rubbing alcohol spray it onto your color and mix it in, get it to be really nice and liquid. And we're gonna do a little bit more liquid here. There we go. And so this is just regular rubbing alcohol that you can get at any, any kind of grocery store. And yes, you had a question? Yeah, will the mica stain? Well, the mica stain, you know, any colorant that you use too much of absolutely is going to stain. However, um, as long as you're not using too much um, and you're staying a nice pastel, it won't stain. Uh, so the answer is as long as you're not using too much, it won't stain. And I am going to go ahead and paint this guy right here. So you can paint your bath fizzies with the extra mica that's left over as long as you just mix it with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. So you can do a drizzle, kind of like a Jackson Pollock drizzle. You can try and paint a heart on there like I am doing, or that that is a really fun way to personalize it. Like you can think, I mean, you can do, you could do all kinds of things like, oh, initials. Like you could do initials for weddings, like that kind of thing. Be really fun. So Courtney, before I move into like commonly frequently asked questions and maybe do a little bath fizzy demo. No? Okay. So I'm gonna move into some frequently asked questions because bath fizzies are one of those things I get a lot of questions on. And I, so some of the most commonly asked questions I get are, my bath fizzies are crumbling or cracking and I don't know what to do about that. Like, what do I do about that? Usually if your bath fizzy is crumbling or cracking, it's because it's a little too dry. And so adding more witch hazel or more oil is going to help that. Also, it's very possible that if your bath fizzy is dry, you added a little bit too much of the additives. So whatever the additive that you decided is. So if you're adding clay or milk or salt, it's possible that you added a little bit too much. 
If your fizzy is cracking after it's in the mold, like so after you've already got it in the mold and you're seeing it crack, what's happening is it's possible that this bath fizzy mixture would be too wet and this bath fizzy is expanding in the mold. So that could be what's happening if you're getting cracking after it's in the mold. Another question I get is, my bath fizzy is way too soft. Like, I really need this thing to be durable. It's gonna be shipping across the country. What do I do about that? And there, if there's too much moisture in your mixture, like too much witch hazel or too much oil, that's going to cause your bath fizzy to be too soft. So just decrease the amount of moisture in your, in your bath fizzy or add more dry ingredients. If you're getting lumps on the surface, you know what, that's why we use the sifter, right? Anything you're not really, really mixing in well is going to cause lumps on the surface. If you're not getting enough fizz, it's, there's a couple things that could be going on. One, your citric acid could be old, like it could have just taken on too much moisture from the air. Two, you might not have stored your bath fizzies in a, in a, very, uh, in a very airtight environment. So keep that in mind. You also could do a little bit more citric acid. You could always go all the way up to 1.5 parts citric acid to two parts baking soda to try and increase that fizz. And again, pre-fizzing usually will happen if your bath fizzy comes into contact with moisture, and that includes humidity from the air. What kind of colorants can you use for these? So someone asked already, can I use food coloring? When you're making bath fizzies, you can't use food coloring, no water-soluble colorants. You can use pigments, micas, clay, La Balm colorants. La Balm colorants are a specially formulated colorant that is specific for bath fizzies, and they're called Labomb, L-A-B-O-M-B. Pigments, oxides, those are waters, those are oil soluble. They cause, they cause more of a ring around the tub, so I don't love using them, and of course food coloring. And remember, what you see is what you get. So more colorant will end up coloring your water. And the most common bath fizzy mistake I see is if people use water instead of witch hazel. That definitely is a really common one that I see and then if you wanna be adding extra butter, butters or extra oils to your bath fizzies, that's kind of a personal preference. So if you're gonna do that, start with 0.5 ounces of the butter per one and a half cups of your dry mixture. Because remember, too much oil results in a soft bath fizzy and of course a very oily tub, which could be treacherous to try and get out of. I have one more question from Periscope. Does citric acid the citric acid expires. Citric acid does not expire unless it is exposed to moisture. So basically most packaging that citric acid comes from is not going to be moisture resistant for longer than a year or two or three. So be storing your citric acid in a cool and dry place off the floor and make sure it's getting plenty of airflow and definitely not being exposed to moisture. So for example, if I was in Florida, my citric acid is not going to last as long as if I'm in a hot, dry area like say Arizona. Any other questions before I move on to the next thing? Okay, before I move on to the next thing, I just wanna remind everybody that on handmadebdbox.com, you get your free extra label download and we have a little guest on set, Amanda, that I'd love to get on here. And then if you're watching right now, this is a coupon so that you can get 10% off subscriptions and single boxes at handmadebeautybox.com. So in your checkout, be sure and add this. And you guys, I have a friend visiting me. This is Peyton. How old are you, Peyton? Eight years old. Eight years old. So Peyton is going to be the one. We're going to get her a step stool. Oh, we're getting her a step <laughs> stool. Hang on. Hang on. Because you can't see her all the way up there. But you can sure see her on Periscope. Okay, and Peyton is eight years old, and we are going to have her do the honors of dropping in the bath fizzy. So can we see Peyton on camera? We good? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, good. So Peyton, why don't you pick, pick whichever one is your favorite and drop it into the water. Let's see, not a lot of fizz going on there. Maybe we should do a fresh one. You pull it this way. There, there it goes, whoa. Whoa. That was exciting. <laughs> Good? Okay. Yeah, there it goes. Let's do a fresh one. That was not enough fizz for me. Oh, well, there it goes. I know. It's been, they've been sitting out in the moisture. This is what happens when they get moisture in them. Let's see. Whoa. You're good. <laughs> there we go. That's normally what I see. That does look fizzy. That is some nice looking fizz. So Peyton, do you know why you're here on set today? No, I don't, I don't really know. You yeah. don't know? 
Your mom hasn't said a word to you? She just said that you wanted me up here to, um, like, she wanted me, uh, you up here to, like, show you, well, I mean, like. How to do bath fizzies like, and how, stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so if I told you that your mom had a really big surprise plan for you tonight, and that surprise was going to Justin Bieber's concert in Seattle, how excited would you be? Good. Good? Like, okay, so that's excited. a surprise. You're going to Justin Bieber tonight in Seattle. <laughs> And I heard a rumor that you're getting a tour backstage, too. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Really. Really? Really. That is why your mom is there. And I'm going with you. Wow. So I'm also going to a Justin Bieber concert, everyone. I know. How exciting. Woo! And you guys, that's it for now. Signing off from Handmade Beauty Box. I hope that you... Get on to handmadebeautybox.com and get your February box. Until next time, happy craft.